All right, Shalom. It's the brother Taz of War. And I'm um, just coming to you straight off the spirit, man. I saw this video clip right here. And, um, you know, it's, it's everything is heating up. We're heating up when we're getting closer. You know, um, this thing can pop off at any moment, any time, man. The Lord said, be watchmen and, and, and as well as pray, man. You know, and we getting it. We going into this third world war and it's coming quickly. So I'm a uh, Lord willing. I'm gonna title this video, "The Third Woe Coming Quickly," okay? And um, I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bar Shem Yahweh Shai, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and much love and prayers to the elect that's teaching His Word and sincerity and truth through the four winds. All right? And um, the title of this video, as you can see, it says China sends 12,000 troops. To the Russia slash China border coincides with Russia nuclear drills. You know what I'm saying, look at all these uh fucking uh, faggot ass goops, man. But anyway, China is allies with Russia, and why is they coincide with Russia to do nuclear drills? It's because Putin is ready and ready is prepping to do a nuclear strike, man, a nuclear attack upon NATO. And um, if you didn't know, you know, um, pretty sure you acting out there should know, you know, being watchmen and it's truth, because you know these lessons is for the elect, man. And um, you know that NATO is out there to that situation, in Eastern the Ukraine, sending more trying to stop Russia from and going back and forth into to Ukraine as freely as Putin will. Okay. To a NATO and you know, Putin, you know, he finds that as a threat. We have more now. So he's doing actually he's doing nuclear uh, practice drills. With China, with his allies, man, and China was sent 12,000 troops out there. And you know, uh, going back a couple days ago, about three days ago, they said four days ago, they said that um that NATO is sending 3,000 troops to the eastern border. Okay. So with that being said, you know, the Lord is staring at the minds of the heathen, and this third war is coming quickly. All right. So this is um first precept this is revelations chapter 8 verse 13 and i beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice woe 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 now the woe represents death and destruction but it is and it's also representing the three world wars all right it says to the it says saying with a loud voice woe 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 to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are which are yet to sound okay so revelations chapter 9 verse 12 one woe is past right because one world war is already passed which was from 1914 and 1919 one woe is past all right and behold there come two woes more more there hereafter more hereafter now this is revelations chapter 11 verse 14 the second war was passed, right? Because that prophecy been fulfilled. The second world's war has passed already, and now it's from 1939 and 1945, man. All right, and it says the third war cometh quickly, which is this World War Three is coming quickly, man. The Lord says salvation is nearer than when we believe. All right, and salvation is for the elect, man, the nation of Israel, but. To, back to the subject is that this thing is heating up man it's heating up and also 9 11 is supposed to be tomorrow today i believe is what 9 uh september 10th 2014 and you know you got the isis group uh you know rumors going around saying that the isis group is going to do a terror attack on the on the uh borders out there in texas you got alex jones and them info wars they out there in new york you know Cause tomorrow is 9-11, so but you never know. It might not happen, or it might happen, man. You never know. But for the elect, for us brothers, you know, we gotta be on our watch and be and as and as we watch as well as pray, man. And always staying in the spirit. You know, so um I got a couple of clips I wanna put I put together. I'm gonna let them play out. Lord willing, I interject in the middle, maybe so or not. But um I hope this lesson be edifying for you brothers summit in Wales tomorrow, the Allies will also be addressing the crisis in Ukraine, where that government is battling pro-Russian rebels. 
In response to that situation, the president is sending more U.S. Air Force units and aircraft to the Baltics, and the U.S. will contribute troops to a NATO rapid response force in Eastern Europe. We have more now from Mark Phillips. There's been a lot of saber rattling in Eastern Europe lately. NATO exercises with troops from all over the alliance staged deliberately in Poland, Lithuania, Estonia, countries on the front line with Russia. Now NATO says it's going to make this kind of deployment more permanent with its new rapid reaction force, about 4,000 strong, a spearhead they call it. The spear clearly pointed at Vladimir Putin and his Eastern European ambitions, which were apparently not satisfied when he annexed Crimea earlier this year. The West was caught flat-footed then. What they're deciding on now is something that can respond much more quickly. Alex Nickel of the International Institute of Strategic Studies. If a situation arises where an ally uh, comes under threat, perhaps in the Baltic, uh, that NATO is able to respond very quickly at 48 hours notice um, and take some action which might deter any further action by another country. Might's a big word. Well, I, I think that, the, yes. Vladimir Putin, visiting Mongolia today, has proposed a peace plan for Ukraine, but one that would leave pro-Moscow rebels in control of the areas they now hold. Putin has the strategic advantage in this standoff with NATO. He doesn't have to get agreement from 28 countries before acting. Putin's more nimble than they can He's be. He's absolutely able to be, to, be, to be more nimble. And of course, that's, that's not going to go away. NATO's new rapid response force is designed to be nimble, but it is still a conventional military response to a Russian leader who's been using unconventional means. And who's got has had NATO scrambling to come up with a strategy to reassure its new eastern members. According to a Russian media report, at least 12,000 heavily armed Chinese troops have been moved to the border with Russia as tensions in the region continue to build. The report cites the Russian FSB border service as saying that Beijing began dispatching troops to the border on September 6, 2014, with 12 to 15,000 soldiers making the trip backed by heavy artillery. According to a translated quote that the report attributes to a Russian border representative it is not yet clear why the troops have been concentrated on the border, but that something smells really bad. It remains to be seen whether the reported Chinese troops movement are related to the large-scale Russian nuclear drills set to take place on the Russian border later this month. Russia and China have been forging closer links in recent weeks and months, with the two superpowers recently signing a $400 billion deal for Gazprom to supply gas from Russia to China. The biggest natural gas deal sealed by Moscow since the collapse of the USSR. Work on the construction of the pipeline began last week. Tensions between Russia and NATO flared last week when General Yuri Yakubov, a senior defense ministry official, said that part of Russia's uh, revision to its military doctrine would include treating the United States and its NATO allies as an enemy threat against which preemptive nuclear strikes could be launched. Last week, NATO also approved a rapid response force, and that entails about 3,500 troops that could be situated at bases in Poland, Romania, and the Baltic states in a move that was widely seen as aggressive escalation aimed at Moscow. So let us know what do you think about this? Uh, why are the Chinese troops being sent to the Russian border? Vladimir Putin is now promising new weapons to fend the Western threats now, he has emphasized that Russia will not enter a new arms race and will tightly control its military budget to avoid over-budgeting 
any of this. So Putin accused the West of using a crisis in Ukraine to reinvigorate NATO, warning that Moscow will ponder a response to the alliance's decision to create a rapid reaction spearhead force to protect Eastern Europe that they feel is directed specifically at them. Now, Russia just got done firing off rounds in Crimea, as I showed in another video, and now they have successfully tested this nuclear intercontinental missile. They did so from this submerged nuclear sub here, and you can see it blasting off out of the water. I've got multiple multiple links here that I'll leave in the description box, but to sum it up, this, Bulo, this uh, Bulava missile has had problems in the past. If many of you recall, I covered one of the Russian launches that was I feel intercepted and we had all the proof there a, an object took it out anyway that was a failure and now they're considering this one a success because they said after the launch from this submerged sub it hit its target some 5,000 kilometers away so that's the latest here on the Russian front and as I hear of any more tests, I'll keep you guys updated. They do have two more of these scheduled this fall. NATO sends troops to Ukraine. Well, NATO has approved troops on the Russian border. This comes at a time when both sides involved in the conflict have agreed to a ceasefire. NATO leaders have approved a rapid response force with headquarters in Eastern Europe that they say will send a clear message to any potential aggressor. Poland, Romania, and the Baltic states have offered to host a so-called reception facility for deployment of military equipment. And British Prime Minister David Cameron vowed to deploy 3,500 troops for Operation Spearhead to deal with challenges in Europe, none of which appear to be ISIS, which is kind of odd since they just declared UK a hotbed for jihadism. But while NATO is strategizing, Russia has come up with some military tactics of their own. A Russian general has called for Russia to revamp its military doctrine. It was last updated in 2010. He wants to clearly identify the U.S. and its NATO allies as Moscow's enemy number one. And that in itself isn't disturbing, but things get very problematic when the general demands that Russia spell out the conditions under which the country would launch a preemptive nuclear strike against the 28-member military alliance. When the general demands that Russia spell out the conditions under which the country would launch a preemptive nuclear strike against the 28-member military alliance. That Russia spell out the conditions under which the country would launch a preemptive nuclear strike against the 28-member military alliance. Yeah, man, because the Lord is not playing, man. The Lord is in the minds of all these heathens. Now, this is um, Zephaniah chapter, chapter two, verse, chapter three, verse eight. Therefore, wait you upon me, say the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey, for my determination is to gather the nations. Now, the Lord say it's his it's determination to gather the nations, man. That's why the Lord gonna come in the mix in the mix of this third world war, man. Because he's gathering all these nations up, man. And they're going to be in the valley of Jehoshaphat when they take off. All right? It says, Therefore, wait you upon me, say the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Okay. Now this is Isaiah chapter 13 verse 4. The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts mustered the host of the battle. Because the Lord is like the referee, man. Okay? It says, they come from a far country, from the ends of heaven, even the Lord. Right, what comes from a far country? Those nukes, man. 
Because all those nukes going to be, even though in the Third World War, all those nukes is going to be shot at America, man. Okay? And a quick scripture real quick, because America allies are going to trade on them, man. They're going to turn on them. This is Obadiah chapter 1, verse 7. All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. Is in America right now with NATO going to the border of eastern Ukraine? It says, the men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee. Is it NATO at peace with America? The great whore, Babylon the great? Is it NATO at peace with um, America? It says, the men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and, and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. Okay? So jumping back to Isaiah 13 and verse verse uh, 5. They come from a far country from the end of heaven, even the Lord, and, and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. All right? It says, How ye for the day of the Lord is at hand, it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty, man. Okay? This is um Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 9. For lo, I will rise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country. Who is that? That's Russia, man. It says, and they shall set themselves in array against her, against America. From thence she shall be taken. Their arrows shall be as of a mighty expert man. None shall return in vain, man. Okay? Because those missiles is going to be like a, a mighty expert man. All right, and none of them is going to be wasted. Okay, it says jo Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 29 Call together the archers against Babylon, all you that bend the bow. Right, all the countries that bend the bow, which is those thermonuclear missiles, man, from ICBMs. Let none thereof escape, meaning let none of those missiles escape, man. Because the Lord, even if these devils don't want to push the button to shoot them out the silos. Best believe the Lord gonna have the angels push those buttons, man, and make and guide those missiles to hit America, man. It says, let none thereof escape. Recompense her according to her work, according to all that she hath done, do unto her. For she hath been proud against the Lord, against the Holy One of Israel, man. And that's right. America has been proud against Yahweh Bar Shem Shai, man. And with that, I hope brothers was edifying. Um, give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bar Shem Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And much love and prayers to you elect men out there that's teaching the word through the four winds. Shalom. Now the 2010 doctrine defines NATO expansion as a threat to Russian national security and reaffirms its right to use nuclear weapons in a defensive posture. But it stops far short of actually declaring NATO as Moscow's primary adversary, and it doesn't actually lay a preemptive nuclear strike scenario out on the table. So now he's saying, when is it okay to launch nukes? The general added that a special attention should also be paid to integrating the functions of the newly created air and space defense forces with Russia's land, sea, and air-based nuclear forces. So while Russia is gearing itself up for preemptive nuclear strikes, NATO and the West, they are surrounding the country with troops and applying more economic sanctions. So just one way to poke the nuclear bear.